hi guys welcome back to my channel i am back with another video and another episode of the life and engineering series so today i am answering some of the questions that you guys have been asking me on my tiktok on my instagram and on my youtube comments as you can see there were a few questions and thank you so much for you guys showing some love on my tiktok i've been posting daily vlogs chemical engineering daily vlogs there so please follow me on tiktok and instagram if you want to see more of those type of videos but for now let's just get started with the q a oh please don't forget to like comment subscribe you know do the things and let's just get into this video so i have the questions written down on my laptop here so if i'm looking down that's what i'm looking at i'm looking at the questions so i tried to answer the questions that i can answer um and i also don't want this video to be too lengthy so i selected a few questions okay first question is it common for people to not finish their engineering degrees in record time yes it is common so in south africa i know the minimum time to finish your chemical engineering degree or your engineering degree is four years um but yeah it is common for it to take longer than four years there could be many reasons um the course could be too much sometimes adjusting from high school to university can be a lot so the amount of work that you have to get done is a lot more and some people struggle to adjust with that um it could be that the coursework is actually challenging it happens it could be personal reasons people go through things people may fall sick people may have family issues money issues it could be many reasons and also people change their majors some people started doing chemistry and then decided to do chemical engineering so there could be many reasons question number two where can i apply for bursaries i was accepted to start this year first year chemical engineering with no funding so um i don't think it will do me much justice to go on and on about the different companies that you can find bursaries um so i'll just leave the ones that i can find um in the description box so check that out and i'll put the links there to the all the websites so question number three is what do i do on a day-to-day -day basis so what do i do as a technical support engineer working for a petrochemical um, plant i basically have to work at 7 a.m i monitor the plants which means um, analyzing data to see if there were any instabilities that i need to troubleshoot or any opportunities to optimize um, and then i have a meeting at 7 30 a.m with the production team to discuss all these things and maybe um, offer some recommendations for the optimization opportunities and then from then i have a meeting with my team where we all discuss our uh, respective plants or respective units that we basically monitored in the morning um yeah then the rest of the day i'm attending meetings and i'm addressing my short-term and long-term tasks this could be um, a design that i could be working on it could be a performance evaluation like equipment performance evaluation yeah, or I could be working on a project that's aimed at reducing some costs or optimizing on cost on a certain system, stuff like that. And then some days we'll have like shutdowns or I'm required to be on the plan to inspect some equipment or to do MFD verification. Um, yeah, and then my days usually end at half past four. Next question. Is it possible to register as a professional engineer after the three-year EIT program, which is the engineering training program? So yes, according to EXA, um, once you've obtained your qualification and you've accumulated three years of engineering work experience, you can register as a professional engineer. So for those of you who don't know what EXA is, it's the Engineering Council of South Africa. So it's basically an organization um, that ensures that the safety, quality and ethical practice standards are adhered to in the engineering profession. So some of you may be asking or wondering how you actually register as a professional engineer with EXA. So you basically, once you have the, that qualification and the three years experience, you basically have to um, provide them with your proof of qualification, the proof of your engineering degree. And then you have a detailed report of all the work that you've done over those three years. 
um, to basically show that you've achieved the competencies that they are looking for. And then um, you also have the C CBD records. Um, these are basically points that you accumulate by um, attending training that shows that you are committed to the development of your uh, knowledge. Um, the last thing you will need is a recommendation or a reference from a registered professional engineer. And then sometimes, I think or always, they make you go through an interview to determine whether you passed or whether before they approve and then you are issued a certificate basically saying that you are a professional engineer the next question hey sis i'm doing my final year this year but in a university of technology i have realized that most post anniversaries want a bachelor's in engineering or a bsc engineering and i'm doing a b-tech engineering is there anything i can do to increase my chances of getting an internship or job as an engineer so this question i really wanted to address because a lot of people have been asking me this question but i feel like i don't know enough about um a b tech engineering or b -Eng technology to say a lot but I, what i can say is that with a bsc or b -Eng, you do more theoretical work so maybe you'll have more chances in jobs where they there's like design and you're working in the office a lot versus if you have a BTEC engineering, I know they do more practical work as part of their coursework. So maybe if there's more like uh, labor work, like physical labor, I think that's where you'll have more opportunities for jobs. And I guess if you are looking to do more design stuff, try to further your studies or get that theoretical work done or theoretical studies done so that you can have a better opportunity in a, a design type of engineering role. Next question. Does studying this course require to live in the middle of nowhere? Like since it's more on processing and creating, does it limit the chances of getting jobs like the office work? So what I like about this degree is that it opens up a lot of opportunities for you. There's different subparts of chemical engineering, which leads me to the question that's coming up. But because of this, I think you can find yourself working in the middle of nowhere or in the office. So if you want to be working like on sites at a manufacturing plant, especially plants like um, petrochemical plants or the ESCOMs, the Cecils, the you know, Anglo. If you want to be working at those type of companies, you probably will be in the middle of nowhere um, versus if you're working for engineering consulting company. Next question is, can you please give us some study tips? I feel like people work differently, so people study differently, different things work for different people. Um, but I recommend just being curious, asking why when you're studying, when you're in a lecture, when you with uh, your peers, make sure you understand the things that you're being taught fundamentally. And I think that will make it easier moving forward when you're doing any um, calc or any troubleshooting or any design to understand things fundamentally. And you have a lot of resources for that. Um, I think something that I didn't do as much at the beginning, like in my first year is not use my resources. This could be the library, this could be Google, this could be tutors, lecturers, peers, study groups. I highly recommend because you always learn so much from other people, even if they are your peers. Um, I mean, you'll have chat GPT now. <laughs> Just like really use your resources and um, yeah. I highly recommend study groups. I think I used to study alone a lot of the time and that didn't work. And as soon as I started studying with other people, it helped so much. So I always recommend that. Oh, the question that I referred to um, previously is the next question, which is, do you mind sharing the subparts for careers in chemical engineering other than process control? So I'm gonna list a few. These include biochemical engineering, environmental engineering, uh, pharmaceutical engineering, food engineering, petroleum engineering, process control, which was mentioned, um, and reaction engineering. Yeah, I think that's 
the questions guys and that's why i'm gonna end the video um i think if there's more questions you can leave them in the comments maybe we can have a part two of this i don't want to do like an hour long video of this but yeah please don't forget to like comment subscribe um and i'll see you guys next time bye